right, so I mean, I'm just gonna go ahead and explain the game so far to Nicole, just because he's a new guy, so he gets it. But so far, I'm good. Do you understand pretty much all that happened? The political yeah. situation in Europe? Well, I didn't, didn't quite understand everything. I just uh, understood that the Pope is quite a crazy guy. Yeah. He's communicating everybody. <laughs> the first Pope crazy guy, not the second Pope. <laughs> I mean, some, right. some people disagree. It's what it is. It's all yeah. when there's crazy Holy Roman Emperor. Look. <laughs> look. Alright, yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and explain. I understood the also that the, the Holy Roman Empire is Italian? Yeah, okay, look, I know, it right? Yeah. All, all the German people have been complaining to me, so, you know, whatever. Peter. You can explain everything, I'm just listening. Hi, I got you, okay. So first, the first... I can't remember. We used... Castile used to be the Pope. That's John Pete. Uh, he was kind of crazy. And uh, so... The situation at that time was... Europe was... The Holy Roman Empire was like two members. It really wasn't that many people. Or two or three it was Berg and the uh, uh, Teutonics, and so we were much smaller and weaker then. And then Castile and Portugal were the were in an Iberian Union. A lot of players hadn't even joined then. So Pete, being the first pope, naturally decides, you know what? We so the Catholic powers. This is when uh, Denmark and uh, Sweden were Catholic as well. I think England was as well, and so was Scotland. And Scotland is still Catholic, but... So we had all of Europe basically Catholic. Pete, the Pope, calls a crusade on the on constant. We were going to jump up by some miracle, but we were going to go retake the... But like, you know, we didn't really exactly think it through, but it was just kind of like deuce bolt kind of thing. All right. So that was the, that was the first mistake. The second mistake was... Sweden was actually leading the crusade and planning the crusade, right? Yeah. <laughs> Why is the music? Torque's trolling. It's for the recording? <laughs> Maybe I'm recording? Maybe I'm not. Okay, All okay. Right. So, ch so check this out, right? You're gonna like this, man. You're gonna like this twist. Okay. Den Denmark was leading the crusade. They had planned the entire crusade Denmark for or Sweden? days. Sweden. No, sorry, not Denmark. Sweden. Sweden was, my right. bad. So Sweden was leading, they were the official leaders of the crusade, even though officially in the DE, I, I, for the God's sakes, stop that. <laughs> Mark, oh my God. Okay, no, no, anyway, keep so going, Sweden keep going. Was leader, Sweden was the leader of the crusade. He had 10 Catholic countries with him. Uh, most contributed at least 20 men. Uh, a lot of countries contributed like their entire fleets. Austria sent its entire army of 60,000 men. Uh, so we were gonna do it. We were gonna go take Constantinople. Um, problem was the day of the invasion. <laughs> I didn't do anything this time. Come on. Okay, can we go through this? Okay, keep going. Okay. Keep going. I don't have okay. all my days. So the day of the invasion. Everybody's for the love of God. <laughs> Everybody's. <laughs> Everybody's troops are in the ocean. We're on the way to Constantinople to retake the Holy Land for God and, and King, whatever, right? It was smooth. At the last moment, literally the entire Denmark, Sweden, Norway, England, all of them go Protestant, literally as the invasion is beginning. Whoa. So literally, the ships abandon the infantry, and so... The, because you know in this game uh, troops don't have any fighting power yeah. at sea so yeah. now they're just out there and the ottomans start attacking and everybody's just like freaking out we're having like, if you think there's been drama before we're, we're having like all kinds of drama right now like everybody's like how have you, how can you do this blah 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 and the leader of our crusade sweden who planned the entire thing is the one who led the protestant reformation so we're like okay i guess we're screwed now whoa so after that, I was like, "All right, I can't handle this." I 
I sent a message to the Ottomans, who was uh, played by uh, damn, I forgot his name. But you you know him, he's in the game. I sent a I sent a message Sigmar? to the Ottomans. No, not well, Sigmar Sweden, but Wait, the Ottomans Rika. are uh, Rick Wong. No. Yeah, Rick 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 Wong is is Ottoman. So I sent a oh. message to Rick as as the Ottomans, and I was like, all right, look, dude. We've been betrayed by like super heretics in the north. Every like half of the Catholic nations have rebelled. Super heretics. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we told him like, even though you're Muslim, I can at least respect you, but I can't respect these heathens. So let's make peace here, so we can go kill the the Protestants. Okay. So that mm -hmm. was the plan. That's what I did. Uh, I think we signed a humiliating treaty with the Ottomans. They defeated us completely. Uh, crushed some of our armies, but we did make it back mostly intact. It was a whole bunch of drama. So me leading the HRE and the rest of the Catholic powers, we decided that the Pope had failed completely. And this type of failure, because not only did he fail the crusade, not only was the crusade a complete failure, we also lost literally half of our Catholic members. So that's just unacceptable. The Pope had to go. So we had to elect a new Pope. Now, um, this is all OOC, by the way, but I'm going to tell you some, some secrets people don't know. So... At this point, we were like, all right, we got to elect a new pope. We have to bring somebody else in power. And there may or may not have been collusion involved, <clears throat> corruption, whatever. I, um, so that was involved. And then Portugal became the new pope with the HRE support. And then the rocky relationship between the pope and the emperor began. Uh, and then as the game went on, we got more HRE members. Uh, the HRE grew stronger and stronger and so now the two main powers in catholic europe were basically the hre emperor which was me uh portugal the iberian union which is portugal and castile and the pope so well there's three so well, the portugal is play, playing the pope as well so it's kind of two but mm. whatever so now we have these two main powers controlling catholic europe and naturally we butt heads because as an emperor i feel like hey you know i control half of europe hey you can't tell me shit. <laughs> so so um it was that going on and the pope was like you know the, it was kind of like the pope and the emperor competing for control and power so technically the, the emperor was subservient to the pope but that was in words not in actions really so we had that drama going on and uh i actually posted something i think it was day 35 maybe day 40 i don't know what day we are today i think it was like a week and a half ago or two weeks ago i actually reformed the holy roman empire without people noticing uh i actually changed it from the because you know it's electoral and so i changed it from an electoral vote empire to an her hereditary empire in which just the habsburgs could be able to rule so I All essentially, right. yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe I was hacked, all right. It's already over. I did. I did. I did. And like nobody noticed at first. So I was like, all right, no rebellions. This is cool. The Pope hasn't said anything. This is nice. So I just went on with it. Right. For like a right. week, I was dictator of the we Holy let, Roman Empire. Time for the information to spread out. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I did leave the post up there. Nobody said anything. And I was like, all right, then I guess we're good. But as the H HRE grew and uh, things happened, by the way, Denmark had a really awesome civil war. You should read all his posts. He made like 15 of them. That guy was crazy. He had a really awesome civil war between the Catholics and the Protestants. And um, he basically turned back Catholic because the Catholics ended up, ended up winning. It's really good. I think you should check out his posts. I heard uh, about it, but I didn't yeah. read it. Yeah, it's really good. So after that happened, Denmark was let back in and he was invited into the HRE and he was accepted. And now at this point, I was growing a little big headed in the HRE because I'm, I was basically dictator of Europe and uh, I was gonna bring Aragon in. So I would have Aragon, Palatine, Bohemia, Brandenburg, uh, the Teutonics, the, the Denmark, you know, all these powers and all the German AIs would be under me as well as Venice and maybe even Savoy that I was trying Burgundy? to get. Burgundy? Holy shit, bro. And Burgundy as well. So, yeah, literally think of all of Europe, Central and Western Europe. That was going to be me controlling that, at least diplomatically. Until, until you see, I decided to have a fateful meeting with the Muslims. See, this is why you don't meet with Muslims, friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> some good future. So, <laughs> good fault, man. Ouch. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so we had a meeting because okay there's i had a i've had a rebellion because I, I basically annexed the hungarians uh like 15 days ago but i finally annexed them finally like yesterday and i gave their colonies to venice as a reward for his loyalty and um so we had that situation going on so i wanted to talk to the muslim powers around which are morocco uh i don't know how to say their name but tunis um and uh umar who is basically a caliphate around jerusalem around mecca wait hold on ifriqia is alive yeah, yeah, he is. Holy dude. shit! Okay, never mind. All right, keep going. Yeah. So, so the entire <laughs> Mus- so the entire Muslim coast is played by Muslim players. As well. I, I was going to invite uh, Sarge as well as uh, Rick, the Ottomans, but they couldn't make it. I think Sarge was busy, and I'm, and Sarge is kind of like different than uh, most of the lower Muslim powers because he's just so OP that he's like enlightened, so he doesn't really agree with a lot of things they do. So. With that said, I was going to, I was basically making a treaty to dictate mm-hmm. the colonies in Africa, and we were going to split Africa among us because I didn't want to. I knew my Burgundian colonies that I was giving to Venice were in Muslim territory, and I didn't want to have to deal with the trouble of having to fight the Muslims just to get to them. So we were going to make a deal, and uh, just like every other deal that had worked out for the Austrian emperor, I was going to make this work as well. Uh, so at the end, we did make the deal. We split Africa up. Uh, the Muslims got a lot of East Africa. Venice got a lot of Burgundian territory. Christians kept a lot of their colonies. But I believe the day during the during the meeting, there was a lot of clashing between the Pope and the Emperor, because the Pope wanted to lead the meeting, of course, right? And as Emperor, I was like, well, the Pope doesn't control doesn't control you know the nations politically. He's just a religious leader. So I was acting as if the Pope was just there to be an ornament, essentially. Just you, do, you just be there, be like, yeah, you know, God is great. And, you know, just let me do the let me do the work. So that was the plan. And so the Pope didn't take that too kindly. He was like, hey, hold up a second here. I'm the Pope. I lead Europe. I lead Catholic, the Catholic Church. You can't just boss me around. And I may or may not have had guards ex- escort him away. <laughs> well, first I said, yeah. I basically... <laughs> Basically, uh, we, had, <laughs> we had a dispute, and I was like, you know what? I've had enough of you, Mr. Leader of the Religious Europe. I had, I told the guards to get him out of there, and he said, no, I'll take my guards out of there. And I was like, all right, fine. Guards escort his guards out of there. So we did that, and uh, he ex- excommunicated, me on, excommunicated me on the spot. So oh, that shit. happened. I know, right? This was so dramatic. Well, no, and I... By the way, I had been excommunicated the day before, but we made up and made a deal. But then I, you know, that happened. So I was excommunicated a second time. It just tells you our nice. relationship with the Pope. A second time, and this time he meant it. Uh, so this left me in a pickle, right? So I had to quickly decide what do I do here. Um, as the HRE emperor, I, c- I had options. I could, one, simply be like, you know what? Ah, screw you, Pope. It doesn't matter. You know what? We'll vote for our own Pope and call you the anti-Pope and excommunicate you from the church. So that was one plan that we were going might have gone with, and uh, that was actually one we kind of we actually kind of beat on it. I had a lot of my my vassals who wanted to do that, or at least agreed when I proposed it to them. So we were going to do that and basically split Europe into a mega death war of epic proportions you haven't seen. Ever because it was going to be the Iberian Union plus Naples versus me, the Germanic states, and whoever else is left alive between us. So instead of doing the huge mega death war, because Portugal is actually really strong, I think he's the second strongest power after Crimea, who's like a nobody can touch him. So I, I decided it might not be wise to just kill ourselves fighting Portugal and Crimea. Right. And not Crimea and Castile and possibly Novgorod, who is who he was allied to, who is another superpower. So I didn't want to deal with that, right? So I was like, all right, let's go make a deal with the Pope, okay? I said, uh, all right, Pope, we'll come back into the fold, or like you'll un, un- you'll remove the excommunication, and uh, the HRE will have its own arch, not archduke, but cardinal, high cardinal. 
that can that has veto power over the Pope's decisions of the HRE. So what I did there was I basically was going to limit the Pope's power over the HRE. So even though I was still technically under the Pope as emperor, since he technically crowned me, I still had power over the HRE that he couldn't do anything about, you know? Yeah. So like if the Pope's, Did you use the Pope wanted, golden bull? Use the what? Golden bull. Uh, no, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, do you... But the... You heard about of the Arche Eri, uh, allowing only the nobility to elect the, the emperor. Oh, yeah. We actually did look up some history for that because we were having back and forth about this, about the legitimacy, legitimacy of yeah, the that's, emperor. That's interesting okay. because obviously you, you have archbishops that can vote for the emperor. And with this law, you can just totally forget about the, their vote. That's a good point for you if you are like in war with the Pope. Yeah, that's true. But that was before. Yeah, Let's you explain may want to happened. take it out. You may want to take it out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So uh, we went with the originally we went with the first option. We were going to elect our own Pope and make uh, the Portuguese Pope anti-Pope and excommun excommunicate anyone who you know did not support yeah, our own classical, classical yeah. anti-Pope, yeah. second Pope. Yeah, we were going to do that whole shtick, but we decided against it because we didn't want to fight World War II. So, now uh, we made the deal with the Pope. We now had the control over the papacy somewhat because the Pope couldn't tell, the, like, he couldn't tax the HRE without me accepting it, thanks to our high cardinal over the HRE with veto power. So, that was okay for a while. But then the biggest surprise happened, right? Uh, Venice, my good friend, finally went back, and I think Denmark as well, who had just joined, they finally realized, hold up a second, we're not, uh, we're not uh, voting for emperor anymore, right? <laughs> so they, pe people started to finally notice my schemes and realize, you know, I, I had basically still taken power over everybody, and I was ruling essentially as a dictator of the empire. And... Uh, they naturally did not like this. I don't really blame them. Kind of pulled the pulled the rug over them. So they disagreed with this. Now, I had another situation on my hand, right? Now, Denmark and Venice were like, hey, we don't want this. And they went back to the Pope. And the Pope was like, ha ha, I got you now. And he was like, yeah, I support this. You can't just be dictator of the empire. There's the way things work here. And I was like, well, well, well. So now I had two more options, right? Get back to the um, old low. Yeah, or I could go back to the old system, or I could say, "Screw that! We're going to call our armies and see how this works out." <laughs> um, and actually, I think I believe Brandenburg was willing to fight for my cause, but uh, and if Bohemia had had rallied to the empire emperor's banners, I would have probably fought. But Bohemia decided to side with the papacy which makes sense because you know we're all catholics here mm -hmm. so bohemia did not rally to me only brandenburg did so i realized me and brandenburg versus venice bohemia denmark the pope pope basically crusading us probably that's probably not going to end very well for me so my emperor at the time Max maximilian one who had caused the ruckus in europe uh it, it was decided that we would take a third option and what happened was abdication. Uh, es yes, essentially, Maximilian was abdicated for his uh, younger cousin Peter the um, First, right. much younger and much more obedient to the Pope. Uh, so he was basically ousted, forced out, uh, and uh, I was un and um, what you call it. Austria was saved from excommunication. The Pope had mercy after we abdicated uh, Maximilian. We had to give up our crown. Uh, that's how we lost our rights. We gave up all our uh, hereditary rights because we didn't want to fight the war. <laughs> hereditary. <laughs> hereditary. I can't say words, dude. It's so bad. All right. No worries. So, so yeah. So, I, I gave up my crown, and I also pulled out of the HRE. Oh. And then they hit me with, uh, after I was unexcommunicated, they said I couldn't uh, become emperor for like is it 40 years or something they banned me or something it's pretty bad. wait so who's the new hre emperor it's venice my boy a holy italian 
a freaking Italian Dodge is ruling the German HR week. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. So, so what happened? Yeah. So. It, okay. Well, it's almost over. Let me, just, let me just wrap this up. Let me just wrap this up. Okay. So I pull. I'm currently here's a political political situation. Austria is officially out of the HRA, but it's like a. It's not really technical because the German parts of Austria still really want to be in the HRA. Uh, we are. We have good relations with. Brandenburg because they were loyal to, to Austria when we were going to fight the war the civil war and we're happy and all the other German states because we're Germans like them uh, Venice and Denmark the relations have dropped significantly oh, very really? significantly uh, papal relations are good but I can't say that the Austrian nobility is, really likes the Pope they think he's corrupt especially since they helped him get elected <laughs> elected so, um, happening right now, and uh, the relations with Aragon have grown really well thanks to the tournament. We met the Argonian king, and we had a really good discussion, really good time there. Austria, the Austrian, okay, this is recent news, actually. The Austrian king, Peter I, actually challenged the Bohemian prince, John of Bohemia, for the hand of Brandenburg's princess. So, that's oh. going on. And the problem with that is if John doesn't back down from this duel uh, and they fight and he kills the king of Austria. I read that. That was the yeah, last article. Yeah, there's going to be problems in Europe. I mean, I can just tell you that much. So when, while Austria has been kicked out of the HRE, they have al not allied themselves, but built good relations with Poland, which hopefully will build good relations with you if you unionize with them. I think uh, I will. Okay, and then they've also, Austria has built trade relations with Muslim countries, which they didn't do under Maximilian's reign, because Maximilian hated all heretics and heathens and wanted to burden them all at the stake. But Peter is much nicer, much more open to different cultures and peoples. So that's yeah, basically... I thought you said it, you were obedient to the Pope. He was, he is obedient, but you see, Austrian are the true heirs of the empire and the Habsburg... The House of Habsburg is the are the ones who ruling. But likes the Pope and is very much a true Catholic who believes the Pope's word is law. His lords are not so. How do you, you say? Um, how do, I mean they're not so so big on the whole papacy. You know mm -hmm. they believe there's a lot more corruption going on. All right. So that's the situation so far. All right, that's good. Just let me know if I missed anything, boys. Mm. Oh, uh, I got a question for maybe all, all of you. Uh, why do I see colonization in America? Um, my friend, the whole world is colonized. <laughs> yeah, all the map is already colonized. Like we're all late. In the 15th century, something like that? Yeah, it's... I, I talked to the guys about this. I was asking them maybe we should do a time skip just because everything's been colonized. Because the, the game mechanics don't exactly work with our date. Yeah, of course, of course, yes. So, like, in the game mechanics, we've jumped, like, 300 years, even yeah. though the RP has only gone gone about 50 years, you know? Hmm. Yeah, the, so, the thing is, like, for the RP, like, when, when we first created it, I, I sort of used the, the rules from another RP round, which was on Supremacy 1914. And because of this, I didn't really take the, the colonization mechanic into account. And now it's like OP as fuck. But yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, this was originally supposed to be a test round for, you know, just to see New World Empires and see who was active. The leader was lazy, okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't lazy. I really wasn't lazy. I had no idea that this was going to be this OP. Like, I thought, I thought things, was gonna, things were going to fizzle out by, like, day 30. 